So in this section, I'd like us to talk a little bit about parts of a computer. Uh, we did a, a brief introduction in the previous section, but I'd like us to go a little detail. Uh, so the first we're going to talk about is a RAM. Now, every computer has five basic components. We have the motherboard. We have the central processing unit, which is called the CPU. We also have the gra graphic processing unit, like the video cards. That's what displays stuff on your screen. And we have the random access memory and hard disk or solid state drives. So what I want you to know is don't be intimidated by all of these terms. They are really easy and I'm going to touch them one after the other. Let's start with the very first one. Let's talk about this guy, the RAM. So if you ask, what is the RAM? Now, the RAM is a common computing acronym that stands for Random Access Memory. It's the Random Access Memory. Now, it's like the memory of the computer. In this sense, the RAM uh, is your computer or laptop short-term memory. It's short-term memory. Let's say, for example, uh, yesterday you were driving down the streets. You saw a bunch of vehicles, maybe 10, 20, 50 vehicles. Uh, if I ask you their colors and those who were driving it, you would not remember. But during the time when you were driving yesterday, your memory saw those vehicles. And so it was only relevant for that period. So things that a computer doesn't need to store for a long time is just used for uh, on, 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 on like right now, on something that's doing right now. It was going to use the RAM. It's, it's a memory. And if you look at it, this is what a RAM looks like. You can Google RAM and if you open your computer, you will see some chips like this one color RAM. Again, like I said previously, you don't have to have a PhD in RAMs and CPUs. That will not be part of your job, right? And you don't make a lot of money for that anyway. But I just want you to understand that, hey, there is part of a computer called a RAM, which is a random access memory. It's a very temporal memory. Everything stores inside is lost once the computer is shut down. As soon as you shut it off, it doesn't have anything in that memory. So it's just used. It works alongside with the CPU to do some computation. So it's temporal memory, right? Uh, if I ask you about your second birthday or maybe your second birthday, you would remember that at least you had a second birthday party maybe some 30 years ago. Uh, but if I ask you every single thing that happened on that party, you will not remember. But as a two-year-old, you're able to remember that maybe they bought your favorite toy. But right now, after so many years, that was part of your like very temporal memory. You don't need to store that. In your long-term memory, you remember you had the birthday party. But you cannot remember the color of your bow tie or the color of your shoe on that day. So it's very temporal memory. The next we're going to talk about, I initially talked to you guys about the central processing unit. It is the brain of the computer. It's the brain. That's where it does all its mathematics and all its computation. And the next thing we're going to talk is uh, the hard drive. So this is what a hard drive looks like. Is this physical device where you can put stuff and then store it inside. So that's just what we call a hard drive. So uh, it's used for long-term storage. If you want to store something that you're going to need in the long term, you want to put that on your hard drive. And... Uh, a hard drive will store them for a long time. That's, that's the essence of a hard drive. Now, the other thing we talk about, let's talk about a network interface card. The network interface card is like, this is a physical card on your laptop. If you're using a laptop or a cell phone, you have one, but it's more, probably a wireless antenna, right? It's a radio antenna. So, uh, if you remember back the old laptops, and even today we still use it. My laptop still has some, even though I use USB-C, we use these, and uh, in order to connect our internet cable, our ethernet cable, this cable, this end is called the uh, RJ45, we plug it here to be able to give internet to that device, so uh, it's a network interface card, it's a hardware component, typically a circuit board uh, or chip, which is installed on your computer so that you can connect to a network, so if you look in your computer, if you have something very new, you might not have that, but maybe some computers of a few years back, you would see that network interface card. But in the corporate world where we work with a lot of servers, all of them have this one. They have a network interface card because it's just best for transmission. It doesn't have interference. The speed there can be way, way faster than uh, using wireless. Let's talk about the motherboard. What's the motherboard? So we've talked about the CPU. We've talked about the RAM. We've talked about the... The network interface card. All of these things are going to plug here on the motherboard. The motherboard is going to have them, and that is what carries all this component. If you look over here, this might be RAM slots here. And 
you might have maybe a PCI bus who can put a display card here and connect to your monitor so you can see what's happening in your machine. Uh, if you look carefully at this uh, CPU. So all of these things, you put them on a board. That essentially holds everything. It's called a motherboard. So a motherboard is the main is the main printed circuit board in general purpose computers and other expandable systems. So you use that to connect all the different components together, the motherboard. And sometimes I just try to explain computer like some sort of like the human anatomy, where your brain has temporal memory, it has long-term memory, and uh, I'll put a slide at the bottom of the page and you can look at it. I got it from online, but again, that's what a computer is. Just think about a human being. You have a memory that you've stored things that happened over 50 years ago, but there are some things that happened yesterday, you were part of it, but you have no idea, you, could, you don't even remember because that was stored in your very temporal memory and it's not something that you wanted to save. Now let's talk about servers. We've talked about computers and uh, uh, right now I'm going to introduce you to servers. Servers are very big computers. Now, not always necessarily a computer because you can build a virtual machine and we can also call it a server depending on the operating system. So we'll go a little detail on servers. Servers are specialized computers designed to provide services or resources to other computers or devices on the network. So if you go to google.com or to go check your Gmail and uh, you're going on a Google server and you write gmail.com, essentially you are hitting a server at Google that hosts a Gmail account. You host your Gmail email and that's where you're picking your stuff. So it has your email and then it serves you on your cell phone. Your cell phone is over here. So it's serving you. It's giving you data to your cell phone. Maybe you want to reach out here to the Bank of America. Let's call it BOFA. And then you're using your cell phone. When you connect to the Bank of America over there, you're essentially connected to one of their web servers. Web servers. Web server. A web server because it's, uh, it gives you web pages, right? You can go there and put in your credentials, your username, your password. You log in and you're able to see your data. And this is your cell phone over here. So a server is anything that serves you. Think about a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, there is a lady, the waitress, and sometimes they're called the servers, and they come and they serve you. And also you are the client because you're consuming the client or the customer, while the person serving you is called the server. So let's talk about some differences between... Uh, servers and personal computers so servers differ from personal computers in their dedicated purpose for serving data they serve data and applications to network clients network clients could be your cell phone your tv for example you connect to netflix you're watching a movie well netflix has servers that stream that uh move it down to your machine now let's talk about some different type of servers there are many 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 different type of servers so the very first one will be a file server this server stores and manages files maybe you have documents in your company you will dump them on that server that people need to access making them accessible to network users common use case including file sharing within the organization and we also have things like the web server we've already talked about web server a few times in this uh, class yeah, they help you to store your website. These are the computers, the machines that hold the website together. And then you're able to browse those websites from your laptop. So web servers host websites and applications, delivers web content to users' browsers. Now let's talk about database servers. What about what are database servers? Uh, database servers uh, uh, manage databases and provide data access services to applications so they manage uh, databases you can have a server that has only all your database for your customers right it could have their username their credit card information that's a database server it stores data and we also have application server application server execute applications and services for clients computer right facilitating tasks like email messaging these servers play a crucial role in running software applications and services. They can be dedicated to specific tasks such as email or database. Like, for example, we can have servers on company, let's say WhatsApp. You know this app where we all go do, we do messaging and everything. They probably have an app server, that's where we download the app from. 
to get WhatsApp on our phone. We probably download it on the Play Store, but those Play Store servers also act as app servers where they hold the applications that you need to do your job. Then uh, the next slide we're going to touch. Uh, this is a quick recap. We've talked about servers being uh, specialized. The serve contents, the serve resources to people, and we've talked about uh, various type of servers. So there are also so many different type of server hardware. One thing you will notice about the hardware in the server are they also have CPU, as we discussed in the normal laptop. They have CPUs also on servers. They have RAMs. They have storage, which is a hard drive. They have network interface. And they also have racks that you can mount them on. So I will just go quickly online and I will show you some servers and some server racks so that you can see what they look like or the picture of a data center. So this is an example of what a server rack looks like. Uh, there are a bunch of these racks and we put in hundreds of servers in them. These are other servers. And there are different kind of, uh, are different kind of form factors for servers. But we're not going into that. But if you get into a data center, you will see something like this, and hundreds and hundreds of these servers. Uh, one thing you will notice about servers is that they really don't give them monitors, or we don't install monitors for them because monitors do take space. But we can actually access all of these servers remotely, maybe through a remote desktop protocol or through SSH. And I will show you that as we progress through our journey. Uh, Again, we've talked about mounts, servers, the racks, uh, server mountable racks, and TOA servers. You can Google those and see them for yourself. And now we're going to talk about server operating system. Initially, at the beginning of this course, I did talk about operating system, and I told you about Windows 95, 98, uh, 2000, Windows 7, 11, Windows Vista, and all that stuff. Most of those ones are called client operating system. Right, so what's a client? A client is... Uh, a consumer like you and I. So when you buy a laptop and then you see a Windows uh, 10 or Windows 11 on it, you're a client. That's a client operating system. But uh, the big corporations don't use client operating system because, again, they are limited in their functionality. So it's mostly for everyday users. But when you get into the corporate world, we are going to start using what we call server operating systems. operating systems or server OS. So if I just write the word OS, I just mean operating system. Again, which is that piece of software that you install on a computer for it to do its job. So uh, one of the examples here we have, we have a Windows Server. So I remember I used Windows Server 2008. Uh, there's also Windows Server 2012. Uh, Windows Server. Windows Server. Uh, 20, there's 2016, and right now there's a new one called Windows Server 2022. So those are the ones for Windows. In the Linux world, uh, we're going to do an entire class on Linux, but Linux is another operating system that's almost 100% of the time is free. Uh, we have things like Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat. We have a very popular guy, Ubuntu. We have SUSE Linux. We have Kali Linux. We have Rocky Linux. We have CentOS. Into stream. We have Ubuntu server. So there are a lot of them. In this uh, one we call Ubuntu, they also have a server version and uh, a client version. So there are many of them. And let's talk about one other concept. Uh, virtualization. Virtualization just involves taking a physical machine, just one machine, like you were to buy one laptop, and then we use that one machine to create so many machines out of the one machine. So virtualization explains the concept where a single physical server hosts multiple virtual servers and has a resource utilization and flexibility. Like you could go buy a machine that costs $200,000, and you say you want to buy another machine to do something, but this machine is not fully utilized. So you can install a software we call a hypervisor, don't worry if you don't understand these terms for the moment. And this software can literally become so powerful that you can now begin to install other virtual machines on this one. We are going to go in our next chapter. In the next uh, course, I will teach you a virtualization and we'll play with it a little bit. Uh, we'll play with a little bit of virtualization. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on, we're going to look at, uh, uh, we've talked about servers, the different type of servers. 
and the uh, RAMs component. Now we'll talk about management tool for server. Let's say you wanted to manage a server. How would you go about it? Like I said, a lot of these servers, let's say you're working in Dallas, Texas. Sometimes you'll be working with servers that are in Brazil, in Argentina, in other parts of the world, other parts of the country. So how do you reach those servers? So there are some protocols. The first one, very popular, is called the remote desktop protocol. It's a protocol that you can use to connect to a server that's far away from you. And not only servers, even regular computers, you can still use this protocol. For, at least mostly, Windows. We're going to work on that. And we also have SSH. This is for Linux. SSH means secure shell. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize this right now. But just know this is something that's out there. And we are going to work with it as we proceed in our class. And we have server management tool tools and graphical interface tools to manage servers. The next one again, uh, quick recap, I told you servers also have CPU, they have RAM, they seem like normal machines. I also told you about a concept of virtualization, where you take a physical server and out of it you create other servers that are not physical but they are virtual, they exist in the physical server as completely independent servers. And don't worry about that, when we get to the virtualization cast, we are going to go a lot more detail into all of those things. So. There are many servers that can do different things. I've told you about file servers. I've told you about web servers. I've told you about database servers, right? And so I will bring this course at this level. Uh, I'll bring it to a stop. And I want to thank you for being part of this course. This is just a quick introduction to computing. And uh, if I would have to make a summary, all I would tell you is that remember that we have hardware, we have software. But in this regular world, the world of technology, we have two kind of uh, computers. We have what well, we should just plan computers client which is what you're using right now and we also have servers servers are the big guys that serves information to clients when you're connecting to the bank or you're connecting to google or to yahoo you're actually connecting to their servers browsing their web page it comes all from a web server and there are many type of servers so just remember that and remember to look at the meaning of the word operating system os operating system i already told you that's a piece of software that you install on a computer be it a server or a client computer or a laptop to be able to use that resource thank you for watching this video and thank you for completing this course congratulations i will see you at the top because that is where you belong thank you